Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. We just returned from a 10-11 day trip to Sweden and we'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. I apologize firstly for the sound around this video. We had a major cicada hatch over the last week here in Ohio. There's probably four or five hundred shells and broken out cicadas inside as well as around my wall tent here and there all over my camp area so that noise that you hear if you're not familiar with it is the cicada and i apologize if it's overwhelming to the camera so i thought i'd come out here today and fire up a little coffee do a little carving and maybe have a discussion with you about some of my observations and things and just a few notes from my trip to sweden so it'll be kind of like a short synopsis or video diary of my trip stay with me okay so this diary of Sweden could be very lengthy, but I'm going to try to shorten it down as best I can. The first reason that I went to Sweden was on business. And I went there to observe a couple different axe factories, and I went there to work with more and I. So we'll talk about those things individually. The first part of my trip was dedicated to visiting the factory at Holtzbrooks. I designed several months ago a felling axe with Holtzbrook that's going to be called the American Felling Axe. It has my signature on the handle. It's a three and a half pound head. That's kind of a cross between a Hoosier pattern and a Hudson Bay with a th straight health and a 32 inch American Hickory handle. So I went to Holtzbrook to approve the final prototype of that design to go out into the forest and test that axe as was seen in my last video posted yesterday. And then to meet the people at the factory and watch the process of how that axe was made so that I could compare it to another axe factory in Sweden to kind of compare the process differences. The second reason that I went to Sweden was because I am the American ambassador for Mora Knives. So I went over there to represent Mora Knives from the U.S. at their 125th annual celebration, their festival that lasted several days. And during that time, I did several things. First of all, I had meetings and training sessions that I gave with their product development staff to teach them what outdoors people look for in a knife to help them understand why I want the full tang on my knife and to speak with them further about the high carbon steel full tang knife and then to also show them how well it works in a woodland environment so we went out to a woodland environment took the new Garberg out did some fires did some exercise in building shelter even made a friction fire um, I can put some segments of those videos here on this diary as well. And so that was the first thing that we did. And then we toured the factory to look at their process, see how the knives are made in Mora, see all the injection molding processes for the plastic, for the sheaths and things like that. Looked at the processes for everything from the initial grind to the heat treat to the finishing to making the sheaths themselves. And then we went to a celebration event with Mora where they had invited buyers from 30 countries that are major buyers of Mora Knives. And they came to this special outdoor event and had several different tasks that they could perform. It was almost like an outdoor camping adventure where you could hike, you could kayak, you could get some type of emergency training, you could get training on kit, how to use a knife, how to make a fire, all those types of things. So I was the representative that taught those knife skills and fire building to the buyers worldwide of Mora Knives. And then we finally had a large celebration dinner and they opened it up for a factory tour to the public on the last day. Before I started the Mora celebration, a couple of the older engineers from Mora, Thomas Erickson and Per, who are now very good friends of mine that have been at Mora for over 40 years and are just an absolute wealth of knowledge. Per and I and Bjorn, who is one of their international sales reps, or sales guys in marketing, and my wife Iris, visited the Gransfersbrook Axe Factory. So we went there, walked through the factory, looked at all the processes and things like that, toured their store and things of that nature, and then came back and started the celebration at Mora. So I toured two different Axe Factories and observed their processes firsthand, and I'll keep my opinions to myself on who has the better process. You can figure it out for yourself over time. And then also working with Mora in their 125th annual celebration. Now, a couple of postscript notes that I want to talk about as far as personally and my visit to Sweden. 
All right, so the first thing I would like to say about my trip to Sweden is that Sweden, the people in Sweden are probably some of the nicest people I've ever met in my entire life. Everyone is friendly, everyone is helpful, nobody is short or curt or snotty with anybody, and I think that is an amazing life lesson in itself, how a complete society can be happy all the time, and they seem to be a very happy people. You always see them smiling, waving on the streets, saying hello, you ask someone for advice, they gladly give it to you in the best English they can speak, and English is a language in Sweden that they learn very quickly even in grade school. That is their second language in Sweden. So if you visit Sweden, 95% of the people there will at least speak somewhat good English. Some of them speak very, very good English, probably better than I do. So they also speak the native languages as well, and some of them in several different dialects. The other thing that I wanted to talk to you about Sweden that I noted while I was over there is that there are many, many plants in Sweden and trees that are exactly the same as we have in eastern woodlands. Although they're higher in latitude than we are, the trees and plants, some of them are very, very similar. They have pine, they have birch, they have willow, they have locust, they have poplar, they have some oak, although oak is a little bit rare because back in the olden days, Every oak in Sweden was owned by the king. No matter whose property or land it was on, if it was an oak tree, it was owned by the king, and he could demand it to be cut at any given point to build ships. But there are some oaks still left over there. So there's many trees. I think there's willows over there as well that I saw. So there are a lot of trees that are not dissimilar to what we have in the U.S. As far as plants, they have plantain. They have stinging nettle. They have blackberry bushes over there. They have cleavers. They have dandelions. Um, there are several others, and I put a list on Facebook on the Pathfinder Learning Center of a lot of the plants that I observed. They have clover. They had uh, swamp violet, or what I would call a violet over there. That looked very similar to the swamp violet over here in eastern U.S. So there are lots and lots of similarities in plants and woodland resources that you can utilize exactly the way you utilize them over here and because things are so common over there and birch is probably the most common tree next to pine everywhere you look there's birch so they have a lot of possibilities as far as handicrafts go from making items out of birch bark as well as making fire now let's talk about that for just a minute it's funny because a lot of people in the U.S. and a lot of people I see across the internet, if you talk about bushcraft, it is likened to or very associated with Swedish peoples. And when you go to Sweden, unless you're talking to someone who is very net savvy and pretty much lives on Facebook or YouTube, they don't even know what bushcraft means. They never even heard the word. Even in English, they've never heard the word. A lot of people I talk to don't understand that word at all. What they do understand is spending time in the forest, which is what they say about camping, and sloyd. Sloyd is a very old word. It's spelled S-O-L-S-L-O-Y-D in the U.S. S-L-O with the two dots over the top of it, and J-D in Sweden. And the old Viking pronunciation of that word is slurred. And what that meant was sly. If you, were, if you were slurred, you were sly. You could build things off the landscape and you were sly like the fox. You could maneuver and make the things that you needed without having to have a lot of tools to do it, just using items off the landscape. So slurred, or sloyd, has become synonymous with handicrafts or handcrafts in Sweden. So anything that you make from woodland material, whether it's a spoon, a bowl, a fence, or some type of cordage, it's considered sloyd. It's not considered woodcraft or bushcraft. Woodcraft would be their combination of camping and slurred, would be woodcraft for them. Spending time in the forest camping and crafting from natural items or sloyd. So that's worth noting as well if you're not from Sweden or not familiar with that or not familiar with the word sloyd in general because sloyd is all based around handcrafts with natural materials. Okay, folks, well, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. 
I appreciate you joining me for this video today. I thank you for your views. I thank you for your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.